Hi, I'm McFarlane Muleli. This teacher guide is about the Mindset Learn series of lessons called Reading to Comprehend. The purpose of this guide is to assist you with a series of lessons and show how these lessons link to the curriculum. We also discuss ideas for using the lessons with your learners. You may want to make notes, so have a paper and pencil ready. This series of eight lessons focuses on reading. Learners are taught that reading should be an active process and that there are various strategies that can be implemented in order to improve their comprehension skills. Learners are also exposed to the dictionary and are shown how valuable and empowering a tool the dictionary can be to assist in reading. The ability to interpret and understand context is another vital tool that learners are encouraged to develop. There are eight lessons in this series. Surveying a text, active reading, words in context, words that act like signposts, using a dictionary, and more on using a dictionary, getting full marks for comprehension, and the five W's and an age. The lessons in this series all address learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and learning outcome four, language, as well as the assessment standard, which require learners to demonstrate various reading and viewing strategies for comprehension and appreciation, and identify and explain the meanings of words and use them correctly in a range of texts. To see the specific assessment standards for each lesson, look out for the curriculum links, which are clearly stated at the beginning of each video lesson. Teaching reading skills to high school learners is challenging as they are often daunted by the task of having to read a language that is not their own. Popular culture and television have also helped to create the belief that listening to or watching something is more pleasing and less work than reading. What is needed is for the classroom to be a place where reading becomes something that learners enjoy and are passionate about. In the series of lessons, learners are armed with the tools that will hopefully give them more confidence in their ability to read. By being able to understand context and use a dictionary with ease, learners should begin to see active and comprehensive reading as something that they can do. Reading should not be considered a chore, for as long as it is regarded as such, learners are going to do all they can to avoid reading. Lastly, it is not essential that learners read novels, although this is always encouraged. Learners should be encouraged to read the newspaper daily, not simply for the sake of reading, but for the information that is imparted to them while performing this activity. If possible, you will find it useful to watch the videos by yourself before you show them to your learners. This will enable you to make notes of places to stop the video and ask questions or to have a discussion. It will also allow you to see when and how you could best incorporate the video lessons into your learning program. You could also think of activities you could do with your learners before or after watching the videos. Throughout the lessons, you will see the pause icon. The pause indicates a good place to stop the video and get your learners to complete a quick activity or have a discussion about something. Obviously, you don't have to stop the lesson at every pause, but should you choose to use them, you will find that they will help you to get learners involved and keep them paying attention. To get learners interested in these lessons and to keep them involved, you will find it very useful to get them to do the tasks and activities presented in the lesson. These tasks are linked to the learning outcomes given in the lessons and to at least one assessment standard in the curriculum policy. Completing the task will give both you and your learners evidence of how well they have achieved the lesson outcomes. The task can also be used as part of a learner's record of progress towards the assessment standards for each grade. Now, let's have a more detailed look at the lessons in the series and how you can use them in your classroom. In the first lesson in the series, we learn about the importance of pre-reading. Here, learners are shown how to survey a text by looking for certain clues before delving into the actual task of reading. By doing this, learners become aware of the value of visual clues to aid their interpretation and understanding of the written text. For this task, learners are provided the heading and subheading from a newspaper article and asked to predict what is going to be written about it in the text. 
Prior to asking your learners to complete this task, your class could look at other headings and subheadings to practice the skill of inferring information from headlines. In the second lesson, learners become aware of the importance of becoming active readers. Learners are exposed to specific texts and are shown how to get the most out of them in terms of comprehension and understanding. After you have viewed this lesson with your learners, encourage them to apply the techniques given in the lesson to a text you are studying in class. This should be done on a regular basis to ensure that these reading skills become almost automatic when learners are faced with a text. For this lesson's task, ask learners to find their own text and apply what they have learned. They are required to predict what they think the article is about based on certain clues that they've been taught to look for. In this lesson, learners are provided with certain steps to follow in order to work out the meanings of words that are unfamiliar. Have a list of sentences and their sources ready, so that after you have shown this lesson to your learners, they can then practice working out the meanings of unfamiliar words using the approach that is taught in this lesson. For the lesson's tasks, learners are required to work out the meaning of a word that appears in a number of different contexts. The word is simple enough, but the purpose of the task is to encourage a logical pattern of thought. Discourage learners from using a dictionary in this task so that they are forced to work out the meaning of the word from the context. In the fourth lesson, we focus on looking out for words that act like signposts. By being able to identify these types of words, learners will more easily be able to follow the logical processes found in various written texts. The task for this lesson requires learners to write a passage in which they make use of various signpost words that show their train of thought to the reader. If learners find this task difficult at first, have them write a point form summary to start. Also, do a paragraph together as a class on the board so that learners can practice what it means to think through something logically. In this lesson, learners are taught the skill of using a dictionary efficiently and effectively. Learners are exposed to a specific dictionary entry and learn that the definition of a word is simply one aspect of the dictionary entry. After you have shown learners this lesson, you might want to find another word in the dictionary for learners to practice identifying the different components, such as the head word, etymology and pronunciation. In this task, learners are required to look up a specific word in the dictionary and answer certain questions about that dictionary entry. When discussing the learners' answers in class, also talk about why everyone's answers are not the same, even though they've looked up the same word. In this lesson, learners are taught that there are various types of dictionaries and that these dictionaries serve a variety of purposes. Learners are also shown how to ascertain the type of dictionary that will best suit their needs. After you have shown this lesson, look at the dictionaries that are available in your class and assess how appropriate they are for the needs of your learners. In this lesson, learners are taught the skill of answering comprehension questions. Learners are taught how to approach a text before answering the questions, as well as how to approach the questions and how to handle answering them. It would be worth showing this lesson to learners prior to them completing a comprehension exercise. In the final lesson in this series, learners are taught that there are various types of questions. By being made aware of this fact, learners are then better equipped to handle and approach questions in examination conditions. After you have shown this lesson, you could ask learners to look at a comprehension exercise that they have recently completed in class and to identify what type of questions were asked. In this lesson's tasks, learners are required to devise a series of questions based on a short paragraph that is provided for them. You could use this task as an opportunity to develop the skills of being able to read between the lines. Learners should be made aware that being able to read actively and critically is a tool that develops both knowledge and power. By the end of the series, learners should be more confident in their ability to read and as such be more ready to take up the challenge of becoming part of a reading and literate nation. We hope that you will enjoy using these lessons to help your learners improve their comprehension skills and become more active readers. However, if you would like more information about how to use these lessons or even lesson notes for each lesson, please visit our website on www.mindset.co.za. Goodbye.